Hello, Instagram and the world. This is Jonathan Melendrez. I am a professional ballroom dancer. I'm a choreographer for Wedding First Dances, and I am a three-time winner of The Knot. Uh, I want everybody to know that uh, we go live twice a week, Monday and Fridays at 12 o'clock. And uh, if you want to answer questions, I'm sorry, if you want to ask questions, please, please do so. Just type them in, and uh, I definitely want to acknowledge everybody for coming on. Uh, Mary Lou Koschuk is here. I want to welcome her. Uh, so if you have questions uh, for today's for today's live stream, please don't be afraid to ask, and uh, we'll do our best to get them uh, on air. Uh, I do want to let everybody know that uh, Melendra's Dance Studios and John Melendra's uh, is now open for business, for private lessons. Uh, we do private lessons in person. Uh, we also have um, Zoom for consultations. If you're uncomfortable coming to the studio wearing a mask and carrying alcohol preps, uh, we can do your lessons online through Zoom. Uh, we have group classes. I've joined forces with my little brother uh, doing group classes weekly. And uh, that is located on royalpalacedance.com, royalpalacedance.com. Uh, swing, hustle, salsa, uh, all the dances on Zoom uh, via royalpalacedance.com. Uh, today uh, we have we have returning a uh, a very important person when it comes to dress uh, design wedding gowns. Um, but before we get to uh, Zola Keller, I do want to bring on a friend of ours, uh, invite her in and see if there's any new things going on in her life and her business in this state of the world of COVID that we are now living in. So I want to welcome Naran, Angela Naran Shoes. Say hi, Naran. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully great. It's How Friday. are you, John? I'm doing pretty good. It's Friday. I don't know if that really makes a difference anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, especially I think when you work at home like I do, um, every day sort of uh, runs into the next, you know. It just. But I think today uh, we do have some sun. We've had a whole lot of uh, rain lately, a whole lot of mosquitoes here in South Florida. Yeah, yeah. I go outside just to check the weather, and I'm already floored with uh, with mosquitoes and bugs. And when it gets damp like this, it's just uh, unbearable to uh, be around bugs and insects and such. It's annoying. Yeah, Florida has some amazing critters, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I know Zola's going to be... Hi, Zola. Yeah, it says, hi, am I there? Zola, you are waiting in the wings. What John will do is dump me when the time is right, and then he will bring you on. So, Zola, you'll be able to speak with everyone. You did an amazing interview with Zola last week. I, I absolutely loved watching it. She's a delightful person. She's yes. full of wonderful very valuable information. She's got some great ideas in addition to being able to provide beautiful uh, wedding dresses, beautiful mother of the bride, mother of the groom, pageant gowns, um, any kind of formal affair. And also she has two store locations that I'm sure she'll tell everybody about, but one of them is for the formal stuff and the, the cocktail attire. And then she's got another location where she does sportswear and uh, just some not quite some, you know, not quite as formal and fancy. And I have on right now one of my wonderful new Zola Keller outfits. And um, I have not had an opportunity to wear this yet because of the, you know, the COVID. But Zola, this is one of the outfits that I need to bring to you, sweetie, because the pants are at least this much too long. And I'm uh, I'm a rather short woman, so... Uh, I'll be coming to the store to have all of my beautiful Zola Keller outfits altered. And uh, now that things are opening back up, we'll be able to get out and dance and do some fun stuff. So, John, I am so excited to hear that you are back open again. So where are you teaching? Where can people come? And what kind of uh, restrictions, what kind of uh, procedures are you following? Well, uh, I have two locations that I work with, uh, one in West Palm Beach and one in Delray Beach. And uh, although they have their schedule and they have their um, the guidelines in which to follow, I'm asking everybody mm -hmm. to bring in, wear masks, and you have to wear your mask throughout the whole lesson, or else it's just that we're going to cancel the lesson. 
You know, so uh, I, I am asking uh, my students uh, to come in with masks, wear them all the way through. And if they want to wear one of those face shields, please be my guest. Please wear it and don't take it off during the lesson because the lesson will, uh, I'll cancel the lesson if you, if you take your mask off. And bring, uh, mm -hmm. and bring alcohol. Sorry, bring <laughs> alcohol wipes. Sorry. Bring alcohol wipes to wash your hands. And, uh, oh, no, oh, not, not this kind, not the, <laughs> not this kind of <laughs> but sure, it will sanitize. They should bring, uh, drinkable alcohol. It will sanitize the mouth. It will keep the air virus free. I think it's highly recommended, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, uh getting, so getting back to, to the lessons. Yeah, we have two locations, uh, Delray Beach and West Palm Beach, and um, we have to call in advance uh, to make sure that uh, we get the spot because, uh, you know, because of the guidelines, everyone has the same spot. We're not letting in uh, more than one or two lessons on at the same time, where it was before, we would share the floor, share the music, and there would be more than one lesson going on at each time. So uh, now mm -hmm. the schedule is, is obviously more strict. And, um, you know, there's more guidelines to follow. You know, we want to open, we want to get everybody started on their first dance, but we have to do it responsibly and that we, no one gets infected. I sure don't want to get infected and spread it to my family either, oh, so. Wonderful. But, uh. Now, John, I, you've got Zola waiting. I know that everybody wants to hear from her, but I do want to um, commit with you one of these shows. You know, I used to do what you do with, you know, teach the uh, choreography and, wedding dance lessons and I think that it would be a hoot for us to talk about that together compare notes share some amazing stories you know success stories of of the joys of yes. choreographing dances and I, I'm in a unique position to really be able to to share this with you and with your students because I did it myself for about 12 years yes. so uh, I hope I hope you would allot some time for us to talk about that in the future Yes, yes. In fact, I also want to do a video of why guys don't dance, why men are scared of dancing. So we can put that in there. But yes, let's write that down and do it. Okay. All right. So, so get rid of me. Move on to Zola. Okay. Without, without any delay, here we go, Zola. <laughs> I don't get too nervous. Okay, Zola. Here we go. Are you decent? <laughs> The world-renowned Zola Keller, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. Zola! Yeah, I made it! Hey, she did it! Hey. <laughs> oh, I want to see when you two talk about, or when you talk about why men don't dance. Oh, I cannot wait to hear about that. You know, I have some serious thoughts on why guys don't dance. Uh, but, you know, if they were smart, they really should. <laughs> For sure. I know. That's the way I love Every time I think about what you said about, you know, you forget all the one-liners, you got it. You want to dance? That's it. You don't have That's to talk it. anymore. No. It's really dumb if they don't. <laughs> it is dumb. It is dumb. And uh, like I said, you know, that is a whole, that's a whole one hour of video. That's a whole show right there. Yeah. Probably two or three, but, you right. know. Right. So how, how are you doing? How, how are things going uh, at the stores? Um, it's good. You know, we're open and I'm doing regular hours, 10 to 530 again, which yeah. is great. You know, and I got the sign up. Please don't come in without your mask and no problems. I mean, we're, we're up and running. My seamstresses are back. Everybody's back. So, good. you know, I'd like to work by appointment if possible. But if not, everyone's welcome. Uh, if, if someone wants to book an appointment with you, how do they do that? They, it's the easiest way is to give me a, give us a call. The phone number is 954-462-3222. Just call us. You know, yeah. um, I also have on my website, you know, a place to contact us. And I, I'm the one that uh, responds. So, you know, that's just as well. And I book the appointment that way. Wow, that's awesome. Good yeah. for you. I mean, you, you handle it directly yourself. Yeah, I do. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, you know, Jonathan, that's about all I can do. I press a button, webmail, and respond. <laughs> Real easy. All this other finagle stuff, forget about it. I can't. You just sent me two things I'm supposed to do. Forget it. It's not happening. <laughs> 
There's one too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you, right now you are on the cutting edge of technology right now. So good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this, we are back, you are back by popular demand because uh, every, you know, uh, you know, your last, our last conversation that we had was uh, super sky high in, in, uh, in likes and questions and people had called me say, can you bring her back on again? You guys had such a great show. You guys should do this like on TV or something, but. I'm um, not, that's easy, I'm ready. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna be on uh, Channel 6, that's our NBC affiliate at three o'clock with oh, wow. uh, Trina Robinson. And uh, they're gonna be asking me how Las Solas is doing and the pandemic and you know, the protesters and all that. So that right. should be interesting. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I asked this uh, on our last, uh, last, uh, last conversation, but uh, can you give tips to um, brides, uh, tips on what to look for in a dress? Because I'm sure, well, I'm sure women know what they want, but uh, maybe they don't know everything. Are there any tips that you can give them and what to look for in, in a wedding dress? You know, the girls have to do their homework because it makes it easier for the bridal consultant. So, I'm sorry. So, um, when they come in, you know, they do their homework, they look at Pinterest, they look at Instagram, and they bring in the pictures that they like. So, this is showing the consultant what their likes and dislikes are. So, but I'm going to tell you a funny story. So, um, they come in, we look at it, we pull the dress styles that they like. And they try them on and they come out and if they got a face, you know, and they go, yeah, it's all right. You know, and, uh, okay, next. So we do it that way. And then, you know, as a consultant, I say the same thing. Okay, can I pick a few dresses out for you that I think might look good? Sure, I'm here, I might as well. So then we start. And then we start with not our opinion because they look in the mirror, but we see their bodies. You know, these models that they look at, are six feet. Now, most average woman is five, five, five under, you know? So it's like, it's not realistic when they're looking at these dresses. And right. we all have body shapes, either we're a pear shape or an apple shape. So, uh, you know, so it's, it's different. And as a consultant, we know what's gonna look better on them. So we start putting on those dresses. And the first time I hear that, oh, I love this dress. Okay, that's it, we're done. Not that it is, but that's, you know, that in my mind, okay, we're going to go to back to this one after you try on another 20 gowns or whatever. Now, how, how, how similar is that show, Yes to the Dress? I mean, is that real, real, or is that? It's all no. staged. It's is all that? staged. You know, they, they pick out the ones that have great personalities and that aren't afraid, you know, of the camera and all that. But basically, they're going to tell them, you know, from the time they walk out of the fitting room to outside what they're going to say you know so you know they they you know they set it all up so it makes it interesting and it's it's not real most of the time this well, that's what i hear from the girls that have actually gone there and they oh, come really? to me and buy a dress yes <laughs> now when when the girls try on the dresses right um what do they wear what do they wear when when they you know do they wear undergarment or yoga pants what, what do they wear when they try it on I prefer underwear of some sort. So it's, you know, I, um, anyway, whatever you're going to wear, it depends. If it's a strapless and it's a boned in corset, you don't really need much, you know, underneath the dress except panties, you know. So, um, you know, whatever you're comfortable in. You know, the day of your wedding, you should be you. Don't go in, you know, it's like, you know, I love the makeup and I love all this stuff, but it's not them. If it's not them, don't, you must do trials first because yeah. you don't want to wait to the day of the wedding and they go, oh my God, I look like I should be, you know, I don't want to even use, you know, on stage because it's too much makeup and that's not her. Same yeah. thing with hair. You need to do your hair trials because you don't want to wait until the day and say, oh my God, what was I thinking? You right. Know, it's that type. Now, what, what type of people do the brides bring in in their entourage? Is, does it matter? Okay. Does it, does it matter? Yeah, I got I a phone call. my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, so their entourage, does it matter to you who they bring or who do they bring? 
Well, nowadays, because of the pandemic, I only allow the bride and two guests the most. So it's mm -hmm. usually mom and maid of honor or mom and, you know, dad, whatever. But that's only allowed two. And they also must wear masks. Anybody that walks in the store has to have a mask on. Right, right. So no more of those, you know, I'm bringing in 10 bridesmaids. No, can't happen anymore. But I have had, I have, a, I'm doing a wedding right now. She has 15 bridesmaids. So what they did, yeah, well, I, they weren't all coming in. So what we did is that we took two at a time, and then they went outside. And then I took another two at a time, and then they went outside. So it was like a revolving door. I've never done that before. That, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Eden Lex Bridal is asking, is it, isn't it easier to just go shopping alone? Well, yes and no. It depends how, you know, how do I, you know, how strong the bride is. She needs to have the, you know, I can't buy it. This is the comment. I can't buy a dress unless my mom sees it on me. So I get it. You know, I understand. It's a big day and all that. So, you know, mom is, you just, that's, that's really all she needs, really. Yeah. Because yeah. to my, again, my own opinion, they bring in, in the old days, all these bridesmaids. Everybody has a hidden agenda. I don't even like that when moms bring in people. You know, right. like, because we don't know what's inside the person who's saying, oh, I don't like that on you. It makes you look fat or, you know, gives it all sorts of negativities that that's what this woman is. Why are you bringing this person with you to tell you how good or bad you look? You don't need that. Yeah. You can see, you know. Yeah. Do you, do you allow, does a uh, weight, a bride's weight matter? Because, you know, uh, as the choreographer, I, I see them and, you know, they all look so you know, young and, and, and they talk about losing weight and oh, I'm going to lose weight. And, and then, you know, later on, they gain it all back. Uh, do you, do you get some of that too? Sure. With the weight loss? It's, it's the bridal diet. Moms do the same thing. I can't order yet because I'm going to lose 15 pounds. That's the mom. Okay. I want to say seven out of 10, don't lose an ounce. And then when they come back to get measured, I, she goes, you know, I really wanted to. I said, I understand, but I cannot order a dress on the promise that she's going to lose weight. Same thing with the bride. I've got a bride now that's lost 30 pounds. That's two dress sizes. I know. But, you know, also, you know, we've had the pandemic, so the, the wedding's postponed. Not canceled, but postponed. So now, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to do like four fittings and bring it down to fitter. And when people say, oh, it'll never be the same, of course it will. We make dresses. We know we're not going to just pull it from the back and just, you know, have her boobs under her arms. You know, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it's like, trust us. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of boobs, you know, that's that's another topic that, that I talk about, you know, with uh, the choreography, with the dance, because, you know, you know, when it comes to, you know, uh, wardrobe malfunctions, it, it always happens, you know, it always happens. So I definitely ask them in their dress, uh, can they, you know, be maintained so that nothing falls out? Because I can't tell you enough, Zoa, how many times girls have fallen out of their dresses and it's like, oh my God, you know, whoa. It's your fault, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be I hearing, just... what did you do to me? No, I've never <laughs> Never, never, never. That thing is so boned, it's, she can't go anywhere. Really? <laughs> She'll fall down before the dress falls, that's for sure. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a, another question. Uh, uh, are gown designers recovering yet from material shortages and unavailability of fabrics, trim laces, appliques, etc.? There is a problem going on right now. So, you know, we duck and slide. So, you know, okay, we don't have this, but this will look just as well. So we have to, you know, with this whole world we live in, we have to be able to maneuver to get what we need. You yeah. know, if we can't get it in one spot, we get it in another spot. Or if um, it's a lace, well, this is a beautiful lace just as well. You know, it's not like we can't find. We will find. It's just takes a little longer <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah well people have to be flexible in this in this uh they have to be environment right and yeah. i say first thing don't stress me out it'll be fine <laughs> yeah. that's because you know it's all on me so I, no one goes out unhappy that's for sure 
Yeah. The uh, protests haven't affected your bit, your, your, your storefront or anything? No, uh, no, <laughs> no. See, we, we were actually warned that it's not the protesters. God love them. I mean, listen, I'm from the 60, 60s generation. I was one of those young kids running in protest. So I get it. I understand. Um, but, you know, it's those instigators that have nothing to do. They probably don't even understand what's going on in the <laughs> line. I, I really believe it. So, yeah. you know, there was some issues on Las Olas. They came, the police were fabulous. The police did not allow them to go east on Las Olas. They were down by um, the museum. So going east, they didn't go any farther than that. They had it, no, no problem. So the instigators went around and came up from the east going west. And then, you know, they just, just at random, they just took bricks and or whatever they, they had, pavers, whatever, and threw them through the windows. So when we were warned, I said to my husband, I go, okay, we have hurricane shutters that, you know, we haven't put up in a long time. Thank God we haven't had. So, yeah. you know, so we, I said before we went home on Sunday night, because we're open till five on Sundays, we closed the hurricane shutters and uh, and then just prayed, you know. So it would not have worked really well with if it was a hurricane because the bottom part was like open, but right. the windows were covered. So no, we were lucky because they did wow. get the Wentworth Gallery right across the street from me. So they threw the brick right in there. So when I saw that on the news, I went, oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, but you know what? I think between, I, I think God's testing all of us because this, between the pandemic, the protesters, the riots, and this, I mean, it's like, you know, who, who, who can take this? And I, you know, I'm like talking to myself now. It's like one more thing. Yeah. Got, as a retailer, brick and mortar, we need the support of the community. We must have it. I mean, now, you know, the, if you need a wedding dress, now is the time, you know? Yeah. Bargains galore. I mean, I'm ready to sell, and you know, I we got to make this happen. Yeah. You know, because they're shutting up. the The gallery next door to me just left yesterday. Just yeah. closed up. It's hard. It's very difficult. So we need yeah. support. I yeah. mean, I would no more buy anything online if I could buy it from the chemist shop, which is down the street. You just go and support your locals if you want yeah. them. Because yeah. if you don't, you know, who can stay in business? <clears throat> Well, I tell you, you know, I'm definitely a big on supporting your local farmers, local artists, local right. business people, because, uh, you know, that's what makes us grow. And that's what brings people what they want right. uh, in the marketplace. So, you know, absolutely. You know, so uh, I, I do have another question for you. Uh, I was reading up online about uh, dresses and gowns. Uh, as far as planning a budget, you know, is it I know when you buy a car, you, you buy the price of the car. But there's also accessories that go with the after the purchase and so on. Can you talk about that a little bit about dresses like that? Well, the first thing you must before you go in a store have a budget because you know bridal gowns in my store start at eleven hundred and go up, and I mean really go up. So we're talking, you know, it can go up to ten thousand if that's what you want. Right. You know, but it's you must stick to your budget and. Yeah. I always fit into a budget. I, you know, if, if I don't have it, then my outlet starts at $300 and, you know, we go up to maybe 700. That's in the outlet. And those are all brand new dresses. Those are not used or anything. Right. But, you know, if you go in and see, I, I have a lot of glitter on one side of my store and I have lace on the other side. The oh. lace is, yeah, I know. So when they walk in, it's like, oh my God, it's like a kid walking in a candy store. Oh my right. God. And she told me her budget as we're walking up the stairs. And I go, no, that's not in your budget. And I try hard because, you know, it's all tight now. You don't need to spend, you know, a lot. I shouldn't say that. If you can well afford it, then that's fine. But if yes. you can't, it's not worth struggling to pay a wedding dress. I'm not a big fan of that. You yeah. know, I'm... I'm So it's like, no, this is your budget, stick to it. I will make sure we stick to it. And I you know, just, you know, bring her back, back focus, you know, that type of thing. What's happening? Uh-oh. 
We are a, we are having some technical difficulties here. Please stand by. Ah, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know that commercial? Their kid was doing all these things. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, a, a popular a popular uh, question I, I usually ask uh, is after the wedding, what are you going to do with the dress? That's a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough, it's a good question. Yeah. The, you know, it's, you bought it because you love the dress. It's the sentimental value. Um, you, a lot of times the girls, you know, will put it away and they think for their daughter, you know, in the future. Let me tell you, I have, I just had another one. Mother brings it, um, she's been married 40 years. She brings in her 40 year old wedding dress. And so the bride looked at me and I go, okay, um, it's aged color wise. So it's now a dark champagne instead of white. You know what I mean? So I said, let's see if we can cut a little piece of that dress because you're not going to wear it again, are you? <laughs> you know? And then we'll put it into the dress. So the sentimental value is there. So, but other than that, no, you know, I, 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 you can try to resell it. You can, yeah. you know, there's, there's ways to go. But we have been thinking about this now that you brought this up. We have been thinking about this for a couple of years now about renting. In Europe, they rent, they never buy, they only rent. Israel, Spain, they rent. So um, my husband and I, are, you know, have been thinking about it, and I was just, I was just too lazy, you know, to get started with another venture, as I put it. So, but we're going to do this because of everything that's going on in the world. This way, it's, you know, a shorter time. Right. So, I mean, they don't have to wait six months. And that's where the wedding gowns are now at six months. If they're out a year to do the wedding, then that's fine. Then you can order it. But if you need a dress in six weeks, we're going to rent. So we're going to rent the gowns. You know, the original prices were like 500 to 5000 And then, you know, we're going to, you know, the pricing will be about 50 to 75% less. But they yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it's a way I, I you know, it's a wave of the future and it's yeah. something that everybody can do. Right. So, you know, it's like buying a car or leasing a car. Right. You know, so. Uh, what uh, I, I know that, you know, in our last conversation, we talked about buying the dress ahead of time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, a year or two years ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is, is a year or two years in advance is, is a particular style. You know, um, if, they, if they buy the dress now, you know, the style is this versus, you know, two years from now, what if the style changes and her taste change? What well, happens? You know, again, remember I told you last week, you know, the girls have been dreaming about this dress since she was playing with Barbie. So yeah. um, it's, it's, there's no, unless, you know, unless you go back to the 60s, 70s or 80s, that was a certain style, you know, the high neck, the big puffy sleeves. That's a whole other story. But basically, in the last, I'm going to say 15 years, styles haven't changed that much. So there's no really <laughs> such thing as an outdated wedding dress, unless you go really far back, and that's vintage. And some girls are wow. buying vintage gowns. So, you know, again, wow. it, it, it really, it, I, you know, when you were, we were talking about that before, there's, there, you never outdate. They never go out of style, you know, basically. Okay. So. Uh, Eden Lex Bridal, Eden Lex Bridal is asking, how would alterations work with renting? That's always an issue, but we'll do it. <laughs> we will, yeah, we'll base the hems. They're not going to be, you know, um, finished. They'll be, how do I explain it? They're basted. So after she wears it, I can unbaste it, have it clean, dry cleaned, and then put it back. But you know, we're going to do the same thing as we're doing with gowns that they try on. We're going to sanitize those gowns. You know, it's like renting a tuxedo. You right. always have your, you know, the hems up, you know, and especially if you're short. So it's the, it's the same thing. We're going to do the same thing. It won't be done permanently. It'll be done non-permanent. So that like, they can undo it again. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like a, like a temporary seam or something. Yeah, exactly. The we waist, can, too? The waist the same way? Yeah. We take it in on the sides of the dress. So, you know, it, it'll work. It's not a heavy fabric. 
but um, right. you know, it should we should have no problem. But right. you know, the quality, you know, I've noticed too, like rent to runway and stuff like that. You know, I've been looking at these sites for what a couple of years, and you know, they're like doing a billion dollars. But the quality is not going to be the same as what I sell in my store, and I am going to be keeping the quality the same, even if you rent it. You know what I mean? It's I'm going to yeah. have a, a, a select group of gowns, you know, which I'll start posting and start doing that on my website. These are up for rental, and then we'll take it from there, you know, and see. Because again, we're experimenting. I, I I'm hoping it works, but I don't know. You know, I'm trying. You know, you got to, you know, duck and sway and get the, you know, we got to keep up with what's going on in the world. Because, yeah. you know, back to remember what you said about this is normal, uh, yeah. whatever normal yeah. is, you know, everybody's got to reinvent themselves, even me after 40 years. You know? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, it's it's definitely a new time to um, uh, reinvent yourself, you know, change your model, uh, tweak right. it, you right. know, because cause if not, if you can't adapt, man, it's, it's kapooey for you, you know, right. it's over. You got to adapt. Right. And that's, so, that's what I'm saying too, about supporting the locals. You know, you need to, whatever, you know, whatever you need, instead of doing it online and calling Amazon, cause they have everything in the world, you know, try your locals and see yeah. if they have it as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We know the, the wife and I, we always like to support our local bar. So yeah. we'll go. <laughs> there you go. I like that one about the don't forget your your alcohol. I'm for that. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> I'm keeping it in my well, fridge that's... all the time. You never know when someone is having an anxiety attack. Here, let me give you a glass of wine. You'll feel much better. <laughs> Everybody dances well with the alcohol. <laughs> one drink. That's all it takes. You know, loosen it up. Glass glass of wine or two right there you go i meant to say hand sanitizer but alcohol i was thinking alcohol wipes you know rubbing alcohol you know whatever i just oh god uh, that's like when trump was said about drinking the sanitizer oh that's a great idea to whoever he was talking to sure it is i mean let's do it let's all go for it It'd be the end yeah 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 let's have a drink <laughs> alcohol drinking party yeah let's all drink sanitizer yeah that's it'll it. clean us right out all right that's it that's definitely will clean us right out, for sure. Oh God, it'll put us right in the. Uh, it'll put us right in the hospital. God, you know, I was thinking about things too that I want to ask you. So, what's involved in the wedding dance consultation? Because you do that virtually, or you do that in person? Uh, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because I do it both ways now. Uh, some people are uh, are still taking their lessons online, you know, through Zoom. And so I, I do I do consultations uh, through Zoom online, uh, and now that uh, you know we're open, uh, we're doing consultations face to face. Oh, good. So, and when we do do it online, you know, um, you know, your masks must stay on, or else we're just going to you know close the lesson. But uh, my consultations, um, I ask them. We make an appointment. I go over a few things. I go over their song for sure. You know, if they can send it to me in advance, that'd be great. Uh, I ask them to bring their music. Uh, I ask them to bring in their shoes, in the bride's shoes, because um, they need to practice with it. If they can't bring in their shoes, they're still waiting for, you know, to use those the day of, then I ask them to bring shoes that are close to it. You know, close Angela to the shoe Neron shoes. Angela Neron shoe, and that's shoes. right, good plug. The most comfortable <laughs> on the market. That's right, that's right. They are. So I ask them to bring music, their shoes, I uh, also ask them to bring in pictures of their dress, pictures of their wedding gown, because that's really important. Because we talked about, you know, girls falling out of their dress. So, uh, you know, so that's the time where I need to see if their arms go up, they don't fall out. If can they bend over comfortably, if they kick, uh, you know, I need to see that in, in their dress. Uh, the other thing, the other thing that I asked them to bring in is uh, their floor plan. You know, they have to, I need to know where people are sitting because uh, in their choreography, you know, everyone loves to see them dance. And, um, you know, the bride, the mothers, the father, the grandparents, they're so happy uh, that they're dancing so beautifully. So I asked to bring in the floor plan so I can, I can choreograph 
something beautiful, you know, like a beautiful move in front of, you know, the crowd face to, you know, right in front of them, yeah. they're going to do a dip or they'll do a lift or something. So I definitely ask them to bring in the floor plan uh, so that, you know, that'll help with the choreography. And as, you know, people can be entertained at the same time. You know, that's everyone, great. everybody wants to see them dance and get up close to it and be a part of it. So uh, that's, that's definitely important to bring those things in. How do you and pick, and Matt. how do you pick a, um, a choreographer dance? How do you, how do you pick it? How do I pick? I start, I start from the basic. I start from the bare minimum step. Box. You know, like, yeah. So. <laughs> I'll start off like with a you know the infamous box step, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then I'll slowly creep up the difficulty. <laughs> so, uh, so and if they can do the difficulty, you know, if if I creep it up higher and higher, you yeah. know, then 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 they have the ability to do it. And if they like it, and I always ask them if they like it, we'll keep it. If they don't like it, then we'll dump it and and try something else. But you know, everyone has their limit. And, uh, you know, if they're okay with me testing their limit, I will definitely, I'll definitely, you know, bring out the dancing with the stars kind of, uh, dance tricks and dance styles for them to, to really do. So, uh, I definitely test out their ability with the choreography that I give them. And of course, you know, they have to like it. And if they feel robotic, then, you know, that's not a good thing either. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's amusing for the audience. So you always have to remember you know, they love it. Yeah, they do. You they know, when you were talking about, you know, for me, when we talk about the gowns being so long and it's too hard, that's when we bustle. So I remember right. I told you about bustling. So there should not go on that dance floor unless that gown is up. It's the same length all around. So that's one of our specialties, you know, that we do so well. Because it's yeah. crazy. You can't. You can't. I mean, what are you right. going to be doing? Carrying it? You know, it's right. hard enough to remember one, two, three, four, and then you got to be worrying about stepping on your dress. That's for sure. Uh, Robin, Robin Junula Makeup just typed in a question. She asked me, how long have you been teaching dance? And um, I refuse that. I refuse to answer that question on, uh, <laughs> on the rounds that I may discourage. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. Good Lord, man. Good Lord. My first dance job was 16, it was 16. I got hired my first dance at the dance studio at 16. So, wow. I, yeah. Did you so tell them the right age or did you lie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, I don't think I told them, but looking back at it, I'm, I, was, I was trying to figure out, well, uh, in New England, you can't be, um, I guess you can be, you can work at age 16 uh, so it's either 16 or 18. I figure, you know, 16, let's go with 16 and uh, go with that number. But I've been teaching for a long time. I really don't want to say how long I've been doing it. <laughs> it's like I never uh, tell anybody my daughter's age anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Same thing. I know, I know. Okay, what's the difference between freestyling the first dance versus a choreographed first dance? You know, you know, choreography? yeah, choreography, yeah. Uh, you know, um, you know, I get that question often also, you know, free, freestyling, meaning they can do whatever they want, you know, they can just spin whatever, no timing, you know, nothing planned, uh, mm -hmm. versus choreography. And I, I, I understand why they want the freestyle because they don't want to look like robots and they don't want to look like, you know, they had lessons. You know, and and I get that. Uh, I the choreog and and the re and if they really want to do that, if they want to just freestyle, then I'll give them a couple steps and they can play around. But I I usually try to encourage the choreography uh, for for lots of reasons. One, so they don't trip and fall, and and you know trying to you know do a spin on freestyle, they don't know how to do a spin and they trip. You know, right. but. Choreography, you know, choreography, you know, there's a definite step that they need to do and they know exactly what to do at one time and they don't have to really think about what's my next freestyle move. Am I going to kick? Am I going to do a backflip? You know, it takes all the guesswork out. 
So I usually encourage uh, choreography because, you, you know, hardly any of my brides and grooms come in with any dance experience or musical experience. So by giving them a set routine to do, they really don't have to worry about guessing what's next. They got stuff to practice. They already have too many things, uh, you know, going on at that moment to think about what they're going to do at the highlight of this song, at the crescendo of this or, or whatever it is. So I try to steer them towards choreography, but if they don't want that, that's fine. We can go with the freestyle, but choreography uh, really helps them define what they're going to do and look good. That was the hardest part at my son's wedding. You know, I couldn't even think of a song. I didn't know, I, you know, it's like as a mother of the groom, it's, it's difficult. It really took me a lot of thought of what, and then we didn't practice, so we just kind of stood there. So yeah. now, you know, in retrospect, now when you think about it, it's like, oh, man, why didn't we do this after talking to you all? Yeah, but, yeah. All right. Do you believe in practicing the day of at the event? Like, yes, yes. You know, a lot of time, I definitely, you know, during rehearsal, uh, during their lessons, uh, you know, I try to get close to what they're going to wear the day of. So many times I'll ask them to bring in um, uh, the tool of the dress. What, what's that called the underneath the dress? It's, petticoat. It's, uh, thank petticoat. you, petticoat. Yes. So I'll ask them to bring the petticoat in for their dance lesson so they get used to do it. So after the whole choreography is done, uh, you know, it's, it's a little different when a crowd is there watching and they have their gown and their tuxedo on. So I always ask them, you know, the day of, could you please practice, you know, during the, you know, after, between, after the choreography and before the buffet, can you steal like 30 <laughs> seconds, you know, you know, a couple of just practice with your outfit on, you know, because, uh, you know, you don't want any, any surprises the day up, you know, right. you can't, you know, with the shoes and the dress and the makeup, the hair, I really encourage them to, uh, to practice somewhere a couple of minutes, do the routine once or twice, just so they can get used to, you know, being in that environment with whatever it is. And a lot of times I'll, I'll ask them if we can do a lesson uh, on location. So again, it brings the reality right. uh, in on their lesson. So they try to, try to get accustomed to that. And you know what I, what I do also on the spot is, uh, uh, during their lessons in the studio as an impromptu i'll ask i'll get on the microphone and ask all all the people in the studio all the lessons to stop and watch this watch them dance their wedding dance so that they could get a sense of pressure they get sense of a sense of performing so they get an idea of what it's like it's going to be you know when they the day of, you know, when they start dancing, what's going to be like. So if they can handle like an on to pressure performance, then handling yeah. the day of should be a lot easier. If they don't faint. <laughs> yeah. like the pressure. Especially the guy, that's for sure, right? It's how, crazy. Do you, how do you tell them? Because that was my issue. How do you tell them, you know, what, you know, who picks the song? Obviously the couple. But, you know, how do they pick that song, whatever song it is? Well, I tell you, from my experience, uh, the couple will, will pick a song because it has some kind of memory attached to it. Uh, they met during this song, or he kissed me, uh, he proposed to me at this song, or the lyrics are specific to her or him, or, or the music is so, you know, is, is beautiful. Uh, uh, so for them, it's got a lot of emotional uh, meaning to them. Uh, as a choreographer, I like, I like, you know, music uh, that's going to be effective to the audience would be music that would have crescendos, highs, lows, uh, crashes of the cymbal, drum, a guitar solo or something. So as a choreographer, uh, we look for those features in the song and we, we give them specific moves to feature that in the, in the, in the song. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's from my perspective. But, uh, you know, I don't always get that. You know, they don't always pick that type of song. So they'll pick a song that's more meaning to them. So I'll do the best that I can match the choreography to the uh, the theme of the song. If it's calm and, 
beautiful and elegant, then I'll, you know, I'll have the, re the choreography reflect that. But, and then sometimes, like I said before, you know, they come in with 20 songs. John, which one's the best song? Oh, wait a minute. We want to mix all the songs together. <laughs> oh, my God. So, you know what? Have you seen this, you know, when they had like the whole bridal party going down the aisle, dancing and moving their arms and all that stuff? You know, it was like yes. I, I, before the ceremony. So I thought, wow, I don't know about that. But that's what they're doing that now, you know. What do you, yeah. what do you think about that? I, I think that's fantastic. I've seen sometimes that when they announce the wedding party, that they'll do something on the spot. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen people trip or <laughs> do a back or do a backflip and hit the date that they're with oh, during the walk-in. <gasps> it's it's a mess a lot of times. It's just a mess. So if these people, you know, I really wish I had some time to work with the bridal party, you know, and I yeah. offer that as part of the services. You That's know, good. if your people want to come in, work on a, a walk, you know, to the dance floor as they're announced, please let me know. I want to help them because sometimes these freestyle things can be a disaster. What a great you know? idea. I never even thought. I mean, you see these people, you see it on those uh, video shows, you know, and you see them all do it. And stupid things happen, you know, I mean, fall yeah. over. Stupid things happen. Stupid things really happen. I, I have dance fails on my YouTube channel that you, you gotta see. Oh my God. You gotta see these, these dance fails, you know. Oh Again, choreography is meant to make you look good and you got to plan on what you're going to do. Because right. sometimes freeballing is not the best idea. <laughs> no, freeballing is the perfect word, too. <laughs> <laughs> God. Zola, we could go on forever here. I know, we could go I know. On. <laughs> okay. God, it's, it's been like over 45 minutes now. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> so I, I know, we could go on forever. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you do wedding uh, before we go as a like a last question do you do yeah. wedding do dresses like companies like yours are there special discounts or any promotions or anything like that right now inventory is all on sale so um, whatever you know the brand new dresses that just came in for fall I already have started to mark them down 30 percent 40 percent because um you know, again, you know, we've been closed for so long. I took the inventory in, but been closed for four months. So this is exactly the sell time that I should have been selling them. So, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm ready to work with anybody for anything, you know, at this point. So, you know, no, it, it's, it's going to be a slow process. People are scared to go out and I get it. Um, Las Olas is so safe. I mean, I've, I've never seen so many police officers walking around, you know, the street, just walking, yeah. you know, to make yeah. sure everything is fine. So, and so far, you know, other than that protest day, other than that, you know, we're good. I mean, it's back to yeah. normal. There's no other shopping street in Fort Lauderdale, as far as I'm concerned. You know, yeah. there is, you know, it's the ambiance on that street is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It, it hasn't changed any, you yeah. know, it's us that's changed. We, you know, the street, the street is totally Virus free. So, you know, yeah. it's just a great place to come and, you know, you do a little shopping, you can have a drink, you do a little more shopping and then you go, go and have dinner. You know, it's, it's, that's the way it is. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. it's a great street. Yeah. I picked it a long, long time ago. So, you know, it's, it's just the only street as far as I'm concerned. And you're on Las Olas, right? I'm on Las Olas, right. Florida's largest selection of special occasional wear. Zola Keller Instagram. Zola Keller Instagram. You've got uh, great pictures here. Uh, your phone number is here. Uh, your address is here. Looks like you have an outlet phone number here. You got two locations. I love it. I'm, I encourage everyone to take a look at her Instagram. Click on it. Follow her. Uh, she's got great pictures. Beautiful gowns. Uh, the I know all my handles now, Jonathan. I know. Twitter is at Zola Keller. I had to write it down because I didn't know. Um, Instagram at Zola Keller, Pinterest Zola Keller, YouTube Zola Keller, and Facebook Zola Keller Fort Lauderdale is the store. Oh, excellent. So excellent. I have two one personal and one store. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks Thank so much you for your time. So much. Thank you. I always have such a good time. We, I hope my this interview is a at three o'clock goes as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Good luck. I, I, hope, I hope it goes well for you. 
Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Thank Actually, you having, so much for asking me. My pleasure. Enjoy it. You have a well great weekend, safe. okay? We'll be in touch. All right. Thank you, dear. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. Wow. That was fantastic. Wow. So I hope everyone got a, a, a entertainment value out of that, as well as answering questions that people uh, could possibly have. So Naran, what do you think? Uh, how did that go? That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? I think Zola needs to be your new sidekick. She's so <laughs> much fun. She just, she's full of life. She's, very funny. She's very relaxed and uh, she's always got some really great, helpful, useful stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, she if she was my sidekick, we wouldn't get anything done. We'd be just be talking about <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, you're hysterical. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, Robin, she, she's all wonderful. Yeah. Robin Robin's on. I want to give a shout out to Robin Janula Makeup. We did an interview with her last week. Uh, she's fantastic. I've seen her pictures of her hair and her makeup done. She's a beautiful, beautiful artist. Uh, she does great work. And uh, please go see uh, her stuff. I'm actually going to make you... an with, with uh, Robin. I need to get... I'm going to make an appointment with Robin to get my hair cut. I, have, I did my own bangs uh, several times. Uh, during the uh, you know the quarantining, but the back is too long, and she's in Deerfield Beach, which I'm in Pompano Beach, so she's super close to me. So uh, oh, I'll be calling you, Robin. I'll be calling. Yes, yes, give her a call. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll end up beautiful, just like the rest of her pictures. I yeah, we'll we'll get me yeah we'll we'll do a before and an after. How about that? Oh, you know what? Let me know when you do it. Maybe we can do a live stream on that. Oh, that would be super cool. Yeah, cool? I'm getting it. Yeah, and she's got her own camera. Remember from her her show, she had her own cameraman uh, filming everything. So she's got a major lot. production, man. She's totally, she's got the whole thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's planned for our, uh, Monday's show, John? Have you got guests lined up or are we going to let some, everybody? Surprise? Yeah, we got some great things going on, but I don't want to give away anything yet. Okay, okay. that's fair enough. Yeah. So right. make sure every. I do want to remind everybody that uh, the ballroom is open. We are uh, we are taking consult wedding dance first dance consultations, so they can reach me at nine five four two nine six zero two nine eight, or they can go to uh, my Instagram page, uh, Jonathan Melendres or MelendresDanceStudios dot com. That sounds great, John. I wanted to, everybody to say goodbye to Bentley. Hi, Bentley. Say hi to everybody. Bye, Have Bentley. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Have a good okay, weekend, Ryan. I'll talk to you soon. Have a talk good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Well, I want to thank everybody for sticking now and uh, watching the whole uh, live stream. It's a lot of fun uh, talking to everybody. I get a big kick out of it. And uh, I really hope that people get... Uh, uh, some serious information from these live streams. Uh, you can send me a, uh, an email, send me a message, or you can direct call me 954-296-0298. Please be safe, wear a mask, and um, let's all live a happier and uh, happier life. <laughs>